Hi, this is Dr. Jane Pendleton, and this is my husband, Dr. John Pendleton. We are back with Maranatha Minutes. We're on part 14. Wow, we're moving along. We're moving along. So if you want to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 14, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're in the land of... Um, well, Abraham's Milton. in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. uh, Lot had chosen the fertile uh, place uh, in uh, what he thought was the better place. Near Sodom. Yes, and then there's uh, a... Um, they kind of were fighting. They had their little tibbles between Abraham and um, there was a war. And Lot. Yeah, they had wars. And, and so mm -hmm. now we're going to move forward here from that. They're in, the, they're in some pretty nice land now. I mean, God finally gave them what they wanted. The, the famine is over. The, the drought is over. And um, they're fighting amongst each other. So Lot's went and moved into the plains near Sodom where, you know, where he'd have more room for his uh, sheep and his family and the slaves that tend them. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're at now. So Genesis chapter 14. Go ahead. Abraham rescues Lot. And a year later, they were still fighting. Now, Genesis 14, 7. Then they swung around to um, Enesphat, later called Kadesh, and destroyed the, um, the Melekites, and also the Amorites living in the Hazon uh, uh, Tamar area. Area. Not Tamar area. <laughs> <laughs> area. Um, now, in Genesis 14, 8 through 9. But now the other... Um, army, that of the king of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela, which means Zor, um, unsuccessfully attacked Catalomir. I, I can't say the tongue twisters. I have to have him say it. And his allies as they were in the Salt Sea Valley. Four kings against five kings. That means four armies against five armies. That would be, might have been a sizable difference. I mean, mm -hmm. de depending on the size of the of the village mm -hmm. <laughs> of the king, what he controlled. Now, as it happens, the valley was full of asphalt pits. Again, we know there were tar pits because that's what they made the bedouin from. And as the army of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, uh, since some of the, the, the troops, the, the soldiers, slipped into the pits and the remainder fled into the mountains. So in Genesis 14, 11, then the victors plundered Sodom and Gomorrah and carried off all their wealth and food and went on uh, their homeward way. So they took their food, their women, whatever they took, their slaves, mm -hmm. pottery, whatever they wanted, raped the city and left. We, we see that in movies. They still make movies of that kind of thing. And taking with them, they took Lot. Now these kings and these soldiers took Lot with them. Now why would they take Lot? Well, Abram's nephew was Lot, of course, who lived in Sodom, remember? But Lot was going into Sodom. He was going into the city. He was living in that plains area, and now he was going into the city, and they took him with him. Whether he fled there because the war was on his land or whether he was fighting, you know, but he was in the city, and they took him. Mm -hmm. And all that he owned, which he was very wealthy, so they took all those things. Instead of killing him, they took him. They took his women, his children, his sheep, his land. They took it all. Anything they could rape and take, they took. I mean, raping the land of everything he owned. And they took it. So in Genesis 14, 13, one of the men who escaped came and told Abram, the Hebrew, who was camping among the oaks belonging to the Mamre and the Amorite, brother of Eschol and Anir, Abram's allies. They were allies of Abram. So they had quite a few little villages there that they were all friends with you know neighbors um probably some rich neighbors like abram when abram learned that lot had been captured he called together the men born into the household i mean he called up all men we still do that today three three hundred and eighteen men and all of them chased after the retiring army as far as dan it means they made it almost to uh the northern Did, Israel. Yeah. That night, he successfully attacked them and pursued. So he attacked at night. You mm -hmm. know, back then, they probably weren't doing that so much. So he got the new thing. He attacked at night. I'm sure, you know, God was guiding him what to do. And pursued the fleeing army. That night, he successfully attacked them and pursued the fleeing army of Hoboth, north of Damascus, and recovered everything. The loot that had been taken, which means the booty, the loot, the everything, the goods. <laughs> hmm. 
his relative Lot, means he got his nephew back, and all of Lot's possessions, means his, including the women and their captives. Oh, and their other captives. <laughs> mm -hmm. As Abram returned from his strike against uh, Kedalatomir, I told you I'll never be able to say that <laughs> word, and, um, and the other kings at the Valley of Shiva, uh, later called King's Valley, um, the king Sodom came out to meet him. I mean, they had a lot of um, they had a lot of burial grounds, and they would always call it even in Egypt they call it the, the Valley of the Kings. Well, this is called King's Valley, so the kings would name things after themselves as far as burial grounds and things went. So it was probably some sort of a burial ground. Or maybe even more, they met up to, to mm -hmm. battle. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they had designated battlegrounds, you know. But it was called um, the Valley of Shaval, later called the King's Valley. The king of Sodom came out to meet him, came out to meet Abram. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, which is now Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, who was a priest of God the highest in heaven, brought him bread and wine, brought Abram bread and wine. Then Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. The blessing of the supreme God, creator of heavens and earth, be upon you, Abram, and blessed be God, who has delivered your enemies over you. Then Abram gave um, Melchizedek a tenth of all the spoils that he gained during this battle. Abram didn't set out to get the spoils of, of war. He set out to, um, he basically paid, paid him back for, for helping him. Mm -hmm. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the spoils. The king of Sodom told him, just give me back my people who were captured. Keep for yourself the booty stolen from my city. But Abram replied, I have solemnly promised God, the Most High, the Supreme God, Creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread from you, lest you say, Abram is rich because of what I give him. All I accept is what these young men of mine have eaten, but give a share of the booty to Anir, Eshkol. Well, and you look here, why wouldn't Abraham accept uh, uh, a gift? It wasn't a gift. People mm -hmm. give you things and then they try to control you. Mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah were not under God's blessing. Um, the war and what had happened uh, was probably a, a pre predecessor to mm -hmm. God's judgment. And Abraham knew there was a priest in the land named Melchizedek. There was knowledge of the creator of the heaven and the, and mm -hmm. the earth. Yep. And there were people that were serving God, but there were also people that were serving themselves. And if they could get into your life and give you things and promise you things and then uh, try to control what you do, and Abraham said, you're not going to have that kind of control over me. I'm controlled and I'm uh, my purposes are not your purposes. And His purposes were of God. Mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody kind of broke into those purposes. Like I said, there was there were warring in the land and Abraham kind of got pulled into it. And he delivered his, uh, his nephew, Adner, Ashkol, and Mamre uh, got a share, you know, to provide for their mm -hmm. uh, adventure, or mm -hmm. adventure, I suppose. Mm -hmm. for, their, uh, for their part of the, for helping go save the son. Mm -hmm. And they had losses. There would have been people that would have died. So they were basically paid for their losses of slaves. They would have had their slaves go fight as well. It wouldn't have just been sons. They would have called on to their slaves to, come, to go fight in their stead. Mm -hmm. They probably would have left some of the men behind and slaves behind to tend the cattle and the sheep as well. I mean, we wouldn't do anything different back then than we, than we would do today. No. And uh, God blessed Abraham. Yeah. And um, Lot then decided to go back to where he was instead of yeah. uh, stay out of the, the kettle. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Out of the frying pan? And into the fire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for our blessings and that you give us peace on a daily on a daily life that you've given us here on this planet. And we just think it's a beautiful planet. We want to thank you for what you've given us. We want to give you and hold you the highest and the most holy. And we just want to thank you for all the treasures that you've given us. And that is our children, our friends, and our family, and the house and the roofs that we hold over our heads. And we thank you for providing for us. And we just love you, Lord. And we just want to thank you for giving you our son, your son to us. What he gave to us on that cross is a promise that we hold very dear. 
In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for joining us for Maranatha Minutes.